Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at it two years later. No, it's been like two years and three months, something like that. So it's been over two years at this point since this controller has been released. And we're going to be taking a look at it now. Pretty much the main reason why is kind of seeing how it holds up over time. If the controller is still working after two years and what the quality is like. So here we go. Basically, like the first impressions of the controller after two years, I still love this controller. Now, has the controller held up after two years? I would say for the most part it has. The only problems I've had with the controller have actually started uh, happening like in the last month or two, which kind of made me you know, want to make this video because I was like, wow, I'm actually finally having issues with the controller. So that's what we're going to be going over today, right? So first thing, let me go over uh, some of the issues I have with the controller, and then we're going to go over some of the good things about the controller still too. So. First off, uh, I have uh, some like cracks in it. So like right here, I have a crack in it, and uh, that's I mean pretty much about it. Like the triggers, everything else has been pretty good. Um, I mentioned this in another video on my channel, but uh, for some reason, like these things over here, there's like a little plastic thing that goes over the top of this. This is where you switch uh, your like your trigger stops. It has come off on both of these too. So now it's just like this kind of sharp plastic piece that actually kind of hurts a little bit if you put your finger into it to move it. So the paddles on the back have held up really well over time. Now I only really ever used two, I never used four, but uh, these are actually, you know, pretty high quality paddles. Good stuff there. Something else about the controller, now this is actually a good thing, is uh, that the battery, the battery, I've actually had fantastic battery life with this controller pretty much the entire time. I have not seen any like degradation in the battery life or anything. It's uh, still held up. And I mean, this has been my primary controller for two years. So I've used it for hundreds and hundreds of hours. And yeah, constantly charging it and stuff. No issues there at all. Uh, you can see I kind of have a few scratches right here underneath the triggers. And now the grip, the grip has stayed intact. You know, that was an issue that some people had with the Elite Series 1, is that uh, the grip was actually coming off when people would be, you know, playing games, their hands would get really hot and kind of sweaty, and the grip would start to kind of like rub off and like fall apart. Nope, not an issue here with this new controller. Um, the buttons, the buttons are still good over here. All the buttons, uh, Xbox button is still good. But uh, the thumbsticks, now I started recently using the longer thumbsticks. I used to use the, the shorter thumbstick, this thumbstick, but then also put a control freak on there. But I started using the longer thumbstick and then putting a control freak on there, and uh, it's been fine. Now uh, there's not too much wiggle to it, so like this is me like not even really using any force on it at all. There is a little bit of play in it before you actually get to like do much with it, so a little bit of play in it as well as the other thumbstick there's a little bit of play and obviously like this is like play where like you're not even like registering anything but uh it's a little unfortunate now it's not terrible like if i hop into a game with a, a menu that you use the thumbstick to scroll through you know like some controllers if you have a thumbstick that actually drifts you can hop into a menu and it'll just scroll and go and go flying through the menus not this controller or at least not yet you know no problems there even though there is a little bit of play now another thing too is that you, you can actually adjust these adjust the tension in here now i've had the tension at like fully maxed out this entire time i think just you know over the course of time it eventually just get, kind of gets looser now i can't really tighten them back up all that much i think it's just kind of like you know physical wear but uh as for the thumbsticks themselves though you can kind of see the grip on this one is starting to come off so you know just kind of you know over the course of using it for a while the top little layer right there is starting to rub off but that's just kind of normal as you know you compare it to this one this one doesn't have it this this one you know i only started recently using this like four or five months ago like this whereas i've always used this thumbstick on this one ever since i got the controller now on the insides the insides are actually metal too so hopefully you guys can see that but uh, on some of these other controllers, you actually start to get an indent. So like, let me show you on this one. On this one, you start to kind of get an indent from where it rubs around here. And so it kind of starts to eat into there and get some of the plastic to kind of wear away. And so you kind of start getting some like dust and some kind of grime build up on there. And uh, this one, not so much. But of course, you know, since it's metal, it doesn't actually do that. You know, it is uh, scratched up a tiny bit, but uh, that's kind of be expected. Not too bad though, not too bad. But yeah, thumbsticks are a little loose. It's not terrible, but uh, you know, I honestly think it's probably held up a lot better than some of my other controllers. I've had uh, another controller that I used 
for uh, probably about the same amount of period of time. I used it for about uh, two years, maybe a year and a half, and that controller is pretty much just destroyed by now. The thumbsticks are like super loose now, and so if you hop into a menu like that, it'll just scroll and scroll and scroll. There's just so much play in it, so kind of unfortunate. The sprint button and everything still works on there. Sprint button, aiming, you know, there's no problems there. D-pad, still fantastic there. Everything's all good there. Now, let's talk about some of my actual problems. My right bumper like pretty much does not work anymore. If I click it over here, it does not work. It does not register. I have to like click it over here, and even then, sometimes it does not register. So what I ended up actually having to do is uh, I had to map my bumper to my back paddle here. So if I needed to like throw a grenade or use my bumper, I'd have to actually hit my paddle because my bumper freaking does not work. And so that's very unfortunate. I hate that. So it, uh, that was kind of an issue we've had with lots of Xbox controllers in the past is the bumpers would end up breaking. I know that was an issue on the Elite Series 1 is the bumpers would kind of break. Now, I never thought that, that I would have that issue, but it was like five, six months ago, all of a sudden my bumpers just like wouldn't work. I'd like go to throw a grenade or something like that or even melee. I'd be playing Halo with bumpers melee and it just would not register. And I'm like, bro, and I thought I was losing my mind until I finally realized, okay, yeah, it's actually kind of broken. So that's unfortunate. Now, uh, as for the triggers, my right trigger, everything's still been good here. I've had this one locked on like the max trigger stop here, so there's like barely any play in the triggers, whereas you can you, know, you can take it all the way down, so that way you get all this play. But of course, the whole reason behind the trigger stops, though, is that instead of going all the way down to registering one click, now it can just go down a tiny bit and register one click. So it makes you able to fire like semi-auto weapons and stuff a lot faster. So there's no problem there with that one. Now my other thumbstick, dude, this one, my left thumbstick has been having issues only in about the last month. And like I said, this is about the, the main reason why I made this video. It's because for some reason my left thumbstick has been having issues. Now for some reason, it's not doing it right now, but uh, it was really weird. It like jams up at times. And I've had uh, plenty of moments when I'm playing Halo Infinite where I'll be playing, see like, look, like it's all the way down, nothing. That's basically what it feels like even when it's all the way open. I'll be playing Halo Infinite and I'll click it once to ADS, but it'll lock, and I'll be permanently ADS, and I'll like click it again. It's not like I have it like on a toggle where I click it to ADS and then click it again to un-ADS. I literally have it as for ADS, and I'm holding it, but I'll literally let go, and I'll still be ADS for some reason. So I don't know why, but for some reason, like my left trigger has been like broken, and it honestly feels like there's something broken inside of it. Like you can kind of hear that. I hope you guys can hear that. There's something broken inside the controller that's rattling around in there, and I'm pretty sure it has something in this left trigger that's actually broken off, so I don't know what the freaking deal is with that. But yeah, that is, uh, that's that. Left trigger's kind of broken a lot of times. Right bumper, this one's almost completely broken. My left bumper works, though, but right bumper's almost completely broken. Thumbsticks, little worn, a little bit of play in them, not too much, not a whole lot of drift. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall, controller's not bad. I mean, it's lasted me over two years at this point before, you know, at this point, I've kind of stopped using it. I've started using just a regular controller again. And I honestly, I love the controller. And uh, I will probably actually consider buying another one. But uh, I think for me personally, at this point, it's kind of time to say goodbye to this controller. I mean, the bumper thing, that is just a big deal. How now I always have to hit the bumper on the back or the, the paddle on the back to hit the bumper. That is unfortunate and really kind of bothers me a lot. And then also just with the issues, the left trigger, dude, how it just like does not register. It sticks a lot of times and I can feel like something in there feels like it's about to break. And, you know, I can literally hear something inside the controller shaking around, but you know, overall, it's lasted like two years. I think it, when it released, it was something like, what, $180? Now, I have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of ads and stuff, a lot of sales on this controller over the last six months for it being on sale for like $150, $140, even like $130 or something like that. They've had a lot of sales on this where it's actually been a lot cheaper than it was at launch. Like I said, at launch, I believe it was like $180 or something. But, uh, I mean, I paid, like like I said, like I think I paid like $180 for this on launch day. And it's lasted me for two years, you know. Like I said, I haven't really had any of these problems until five months ago, four months ago, maybe even six months ago. Not really. But, yeah, for a controller that's lasted me almost two years, for like $180, bucks, that's 90 bucks a year, that's not bad. I mean, for the hundreds of hours I've put into this. Now, also, to be fair, I have thrown this controller a number of times. I have slammed it, I you know, I have kind of abused it. 
but at the same time, it's it's pretty much taken a lot of that abuse. Now it's finally starting to show its age and kind of, you know, things are starting to break on it. But uh, honestly, I think at this point, it's fair. It's lasted two years. Like I said, hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. And yeah, I honestly, I would, uh, I would recommend buying another one. That's what I plan on doing is buying another controller because uh, it's a solid controller. I really love it. And yeah, it's just kind of sad to see that, okay, well, two years, you know, hasn't really held up, but at the same time, it's kind of to be expected. A lot of the normal controllers don't even hold up after, you know, one year of continued use, too. So yeah, it's a premium controller, so I think that that premium carries over into the extended lifespan of this controller. If I would have done one of these videos a year ago and been like, hey, how's the Elite Series 2 controller after one year? I In that video, I literally would have said, Everything is perfect, everything is fine. My bumpers work, my triggers work, everything works. There's literally nothing wrong with the controller. So it lasts me an entire year, but then approaching year two is when it finally started having some issues too. So I don't know, maybe some of that is, you know, kind of foul play on my part with kind of me personally breaking it. But uh, I think that was more of the, the left trigger it was probably more so related to me breaking it. Whereas I think that the bumper, the bumper was probably just the controller itself. Because like I said, I've, there's been a number of people who have reported having bumpers break on uh, the Elite Series 1 and even on the Series 2 and a lot of the normal controllers. For some reason, these bumpers just love to break. So my right bumper broke. I think that's more of a, a, a flaw with the controller. Whereas the trigger, I think that was my own destruction and my own thing going on there that's why that one but then of course like i said the play in the thumbsticks that's kind of just to be expected with age of the controllers with lots of different use of them but uh, overall great controller like i said i would definitely recommend buying one it's lasted me like two years and i think that is you know a great amount of time to actually get out of a controller considering a lot of them like i said don't even make it till one but uh yeah especially right now if you can pick one up for like $130 or something like that, like $130, dude, that's awesome. $130, that's what, $65? And you can get like two years out of it. So $65 a year to get a new controller, that's basically like two regular controllers. But of course you get all the options of swapping out your thumbsticks, you get the paddles on the back, you get this better grip, you got the like different D-pad on here and all sorts of stuff too. So I personally, I think that it is a fantastic thing. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. That is my Elite Series 2 controller after two years. Uh, if you guys have one, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Are your guys Elite controllers having any problems after two years? Honestly, I think it's been pretty good. And uh, I'm kind of wondering, maybe Microsoft will be releasing a Series 3 here pretty soon. If they do, I'm not really sure what they could do. I mean, I mean, that's kind of what we said about the Series 1. It's like, oh, well, what could they do with the Series 2? I don't know. I think, uh, you know, Series 2 is... Uh, it's pretty good for now. I mean, maybe, you know, they could add a share button like they did on the new Series X controllers and stuff, but uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it still has USB-C, a great internal battery. That's fantastic. I would say, I don't know, maybe like better constructed triggers and, and, and maybe even thumbsticks and stuff too. But um, lastly, sorry, one thing I did forget about it though is uh, with my thumbstick, this one happened to me like two weeks ago. Now the thumbstick actually like twists independent of the rubber at top. So I don't know if you guys can really see that, but now it twists independently. So it's kind of frustrating when you're playing games because even though these thumbsticks, you know, they do turn on here, like this one doesn't. This one, now the top of it does rotate and that's kind of annoying, dude. And so like I'll be playing, I'll be sprinting and something like that and then my finger will kind of start to push it and it'll kind of start to slip. And it's just kind of a little annoying. Whereas this one, Dude, I can't turn this. The only time it turns is if it literally comes off the thing here. It does not turn. So that's another thing too that that thumbstick kind of like, I guess the inside, I don't know, probably glue or something, whatever's holding this top rubber piece onto this metal piece probably came loose, broke free, and so now it spins independently of that metal piece underneath. So a little unfortunate, but uh, yeah, that's it guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, make sure you guys let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think? If you guys have an Elite Series 2, are you guys planning on getting one? You know, maybe you don't even have one. Maybe you're considering getting one. Like I said, if you are considering getting one, I would say go for it. It's lasted me like two years at this point before any major issues. And uh, I think that's, you know, a worthy investment for a controller. So there you guys go. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.